Okay, on notes 5-3, we will be factoring day 2. So remember, um, the very first thing that you always check for when you're factoring is a GCF, the greatest common factor. So it says, factor each of the following completely, which means you're going to factor until you can't factor anymore. So notice on number 1, they don't have anything in common. Okay, so if you look at your blue sheet, whenever you have three terms, you want to figure out what the sum and product would be and then you would find those two numbers. Okay, so on this one, the sum is your middle term or middle number, which is negative 5. Your product, now this is where it's different from last Friday. We take 6 and 1, and we multiply those to get the product, so that would be 6. So we want to figure out what two numbers will give us, or add to negative 5 and multiply to 6. Okay, so that would be negative... 2 and negative 3. So we would have x minus 2 and x minus 3. Okay, so notice when we multiply those together, it doesn't equal 6x squared minus 5x plus 1. So if the number in front of x squared, which is your coefficient, is something other than 1, you're going to use the swing method. So we're going to divide each one of those numbers that we just found by that leading coefficient, which is 6. And then we're going to reduce the fractions. So this first one would be x minus 1 over 3. The next one would be x minus 1 over 2. Okay? So once we reduce, that's when we swing. So we're going to take the denominator, and we're going to swing it in front of that x. So I'll take this one and swing it in front of that x. So my first factor would be 3x minus 1. My second factor would be 2x minus 1. Okay, you should be able to multiply those together using FOIL, and it should give you back your original trinomial. And we're also remember, it doesn't matter the order that you write those. So you could have had 2x minus 1 first and then 3x minus 1. Okay, so now let's look at 2. So first thing, GCF. Notice those three did not have anything in common. So we want the sum to equal 9. The product, remember, we're multiplying the outside numbers together. So the product would be negative 36. So that would be negative 3 and positive 12. That would add to 9. If you can't figure it out, it's okay to write all of them out. Just make sure to go in order so you don't skip over any. So that would be x minus 3 and x plus 12. We're not finished because we multiply them. You don't get 2x squared plus 9x minus 18. You just take that leading coefficient to so the coefficient of x squared and divide each one. Notice 3 over 2 does not reduce, so I can go ahead and swing that 2 in front, which would be 2x minus 3. And then notice we can reduce 12 divided by 2, which is 6, so that would be x plus 6. And then you should be able to multiply them together, and it should give you back your original trinomial. Okay, so let's look at 3. So notice they don't have a GCF. So three terms, the sum is the middle number, which is 7. The product are the outside, so 3 times a negative 20, you would get negative 60. So we want to add to 7, multiply to negative 60, so we would know one number needs to be negative. So that would be negative 5 and positive 12, if you need to. Write out, start with 1, negative 1 times 60, go to 2, go to 3 until you find it. So that would be x minus 5 and x plus 12. Now notice we're not done. So take that coefficient of x squared and we're dividing each one. So we can't reduce 5 over 3, so I'll swing that in front. So that would be 3x minus 5. And then I can reduce 12 divided by 3. That would be x plus 4. So multiplying those together should give you back your original. Okay, 4 and 5 you can try on your own. Very similar to what we were just doing. But I do want you to take a look at number 6. 
Notice on number six that the very first term is negative. When you're factoring, you always want it to be a positive. Notice they don't have anything in common, but we are going to take a negative out because we want the first term to be positive. So when I'm dividing each one by negative one, it's just changing the sign of each term. So you'll have six x squared plus x minus two inside your parentheses, okay? So three terms, they don't have anything in common. We want the sum to be the middle number, which is one, the product to, do, to be the outsides, and we're looking at what's inside parentheses, so that's gonna give us a negative 12. So those two numbers would be positive four and negative three. I'll bring down that negative. And then remember, whatever the coefficient of x squared is, you need to divide each one of those numbers that you just found by that six. So we can reduce, always reduce first, or it doesn't give you the correct answer. So that would be two over three, and that one would be x minus one over two. Once you reduce, then you're taking your denominator and swinging it in front. So that's negative, then we would have three x plus two, and then two x minus one. Multiplying those two together using FOIL, you should end up getting back what you had in parentheses and then multiply everything by a negative one to get your original. So remember, if the first term is negative, make sure you're taking a negative out before you start factoring it. Okay, so number seven. Remember, first thing we check for is GCF, and notice they do have something in common. The greatest um, common factor on this one would be a three. Remember, whenever you're taking a GCF, you're out, you're dividing each one by whatever that GCF is. So that would be three X squared plus 10 X plus three. Okay, so we took the GCF out. Now we're looking to see how many terms we have inside the parentheses. So notice we have three terms. So we want the sum to be the middle number, which is 10, the product to be the outsides. So we need to multiply those. And remember, we're factoring what's inside the parentheses. So three times three, we would get nine. So the two numbers would be one and nine. Bring down your GCF. That would be x plus one x plus nine. Okay, so we're not finished because we have a three in front of that x squared. So you're dividing each one of those numbers by three. We can't reduce one over three, so we're gonna swing that in front. So bring down your GCF and we have three x plus one. And notice we can reduce nine divided by three, which would give us three. So th x plus three there. Okay, so you can multiply all those back together and it should give you back your original trinomial. Okay, looking at eight, always check for GCF first. Notice they have a five in common. So when we take out a five, we have x squared minus nine x plus 20. And then we want, we have three terms, so we want the sum to equal the middle number, which is negative nine, the product to equal the outsides. Notice on this example, that coefficient of x squared is one, so that product's gonna be 20. Since you're multiplying to get a positive, adding to get a negative, they would both have to be negative. So that would be negative four and negative five. So bring down your GCF. That'd be x minus four and x minus five. We're not, we are finished this time because if you look at the number in front of x squared, it's just a one. If I divide both of those by one, I still get negative four and still get negative five. 
So multiplying those together, it does give me back that inside trinomial there. So that would be the final answer. So anytime you're dealing with three terms, always check the number that's in front of x squared. Okay, looking at number nine. They don't have anything in common, so it's three terms. We want the sum to be three. The product, notice it's a two in front of x squared, so that's gonna be negative 14. So writing out, we know one term would have to be negative. Negative one times 14. Negative two times seven. Notice neither of those will add to give us a positive three. So we wrote down everything that multiplies to give us negative 14, but none of the choices will add to our sum. So this is prime, which means you cannot factor it. So make sure you write out every single factor out, and then if none of them work to give you your sum, then you know that it's prime. There's not very many of those, so make sure that you're really checking and writing everything down. Okay, so let's look at 10. GCF first. So notice they have a 5 in common. So we're left with 4x squared minus 9. Notice this time, all the other ones we had three terms, but notice inside the parentheses here we have two terms. So if you look at your blue sheet that I passed out to you, it says with two terms you're always checking for squares or cubes. And then notice that would be difference of squares. So bring down your GCF. Remember, with squares, you're going to have a binomial times another binomial. You'll take the square root of 4x squared, which is 2x. Square root of 9, which is 3. You'll add one, subtract the other. So that way that middle term cancels out, and you're left with 4x squared minus 9 when you multiply them. Okay, looking at 11. We need to find the GCF. Notice the GCF here would be 6x. So you have 2x minus any term divided by itself is 1. You have to put a 1 there. So after we took out the GCF, notice we have two terms. We're checking for their squares or cubes. Notice that we just have a regular x. We don't have an x squared or an x cubed. So that would be as far as we can go. The answer is not prime, though, because we were able to factor. We factored out a GCF. Prime is when you can't do anything to your polynomial. Okay, last one. Um, GCF of these three would be a 2. So that would leave you with 9x squared on the inside of parentheses minus 12x minus 5. Notice inside parentheses you have three terms. We want the sum to be negative 12 and the product to be negative 45. So that would be 3 and negative 15. So x plus 3 and x minus 15. Now notice, always check the number in front of x squared. It's 9. So I'm going to divide each one of those by 9. And then we'll reduce. So that would be x plus 1 over 3 and x minus over 3. Once we reduce, then we can swing. So that denominator swings in front of that variable, and then that denominator swings in front of that x. So that's 2, and then 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 5.